House Republicans are looking at their last shot to ease Wall Street regulations before the midterms with a vote on Dodd-Frank reform today. Chief Washington correspondent Kevin Cirilli is in Stat Hall on Capitol Hill. Kevin, what are we anticipating will be the outcome of today's vote? Well, Vani, I think we should ask that to Congressman McHenry, who is joining us here from Capitol Hill, ahead of this major vote on the Dodd-Frank uh, Fix-It bill, as it's being referred to. It's likely going to pass. So what's next after it passes? Well, then you still have the, the, the whole regulatory framework that's continuing to move forward. Uh, that's been the, the un, untold story, largely, of the last 18 months, is how this president has uh, moved forward our deregulatory agenda, or really right-sizing regu regulations, through his appointees in the various agencies. And when it comes to financial services, that's been the most dynamic change in, in the uh, federal footprint is, uh, is through those, uh, those various agencies. So what do you think then specifically in terms of that framework? Do you think there could be any more uh, deregulatory package that advances ahead of the midterms? Yeah, I think we have one more shot out of the House, uh, and we've worked with our Senate counterparts to schedule votes on that. Uh, but this package uh, is the first substantive real change in any uh, large format that's, uh, that, that we've been able to get through the Senate uh, since Dodd-Frank was enacted eight years ago. So this is a fantastic uh, win, uh, eight years in the making, uh, and that's going to be the, the greatest benefit for community lending, mortgage lending, and uh, getting capital moving. And I think it's important to note it's likely going to attract some Democratic support. I take it you don't want to tell me if you want the Financial Services Committee chairmanship, do you? No, oh, well, gosh, you're, you're going through it all. We'll have a bipartisan vote today, yeah. um, and the day after the election, I'll make the, the make decision whether I, I want to go into House leadership or, uh, or uh, go chair the, uh, the Financial Services Committee. I want to speak about House leadership, because sure. earlier this morning, Congressman, there was a meeting, a closed-door meeting with House Speaker Paul Ryan and the Republican caucus. The reports that I'm reading about, I'm seeing on Twitter, that from the Speaker's perspective, he's a bit frustrated about the immigration uh, issue uh, for folks within his own party, uh, kind of holding it up as a result of their position on, on immigration. Where are we at with that? So the farm bill and immigration became linked last week, and that's unfortunate. They're two unrelated issues. Um, we have uh, a, a large group in, in the House that wants to take on the issue of immigration. Now, Unfortunately, that large group is divided in multiple camps on how you resolve the immigration issue. Now, we're a representative democracy. Um, our representatives in the House of Representatives are as divided as the American people are on how you resolve immigration. And so you add on to that a, a really challenging environment of a national election coming up where every House seats up. That adds a different layer, an additional layer of, of really uh, painful discussions that we've got to uh, uh, deal with in immigration. The point of this is that we will have to come to terms probably in the month of June uh, with uh, our series of votes that we're going to have on immigration reform. Last question for you. Can Speaker Paul Ryan hold on to his speakership before the midterm elections? Yes. Absolutely. No, no, no. So any speculation of that is premature? Well, the speculation is rampant throughout the, the media, but I think we're pretty resolved in, in keeping uh, Paul under the speakership uh, through the end of his term. Uh, then in November, we'll have uh, our, our elections internally.